So for me, one of the role models of my life has been Richard Branson. He repeatedly uh, took on adventurous challenges. And one of them was, was trying to go around the world in a hot air balloon. He failed. Yes. And you didn't. Yes. Like you did twice. And then you succeeded. We, Tell us about this. He failed three times. I failed twice and succeeded the third time. What went wrong the first time? Technical problem with fuel. Be careful if you use fuel. Because it's wrong to say the sky is the limit. The limit is fuel. <laughs> and uh, we had a major leak and, uh, in the capsule, and I had to ditch in an emergency in the Mediterranean Sea. Wow, okay. And then, the... and then the second time, there was no permission to fly above China, and the winds did not know it, so we couldn't avoid China, and uh, I landed in Myanmar. And the third time was successful, and the third time was a beautiful flight. It was 45,000 kilometers, it was 20 days nonstop in the air. Fantastic. Is it dangerous? No, the most dangerous thing in life is not to fly a balloon or a solar airplane around the world. The most dangerous thing in life is to keep on burning one million tons of oil every hour, changing the climate, destroying biodiversity. This is dangerous. This really makes me afraid. But flying in something that goes with nature, no problem. You went around the world in a solar-powered airplane. Yes. All the way around the world. Yes. When I came to the airplane constructors and asked if they could build me a solar-powered airplane that could fly around the world, they told me it's completely impossible, this project is ridiculous, and it takes one minute to calculate that the sun is not giving enough energy to power an airplane day and night. And this is the paradigm of today. Still, it's about energy production. You always need to produce more. And I think it's really important to know, you, you obviously know it, but the world is wasting three quarters of the energy that is produced. So the question is not to produce more, the question is to consume less. And it took maybe a minute to calculate that the sun was not giving enough energy for a solar-powered airplane, and then it took three uh, years, three years to make the plane energy efficient to cope with the energy the sun was giving. So that was longer, of course, but this is why we have this huge wingspan, bigger than a jumbo jet. The weight was lighter than a family car, and the power was the power of a scooter. And with the power of the scooter, we were consuming very little energy, the sun was enough, and we could fly that plane around the world. So it's all a question of being efficient. I was lucky not to be an aviation expert, because I would have known it was impossible. <laughs> And that's what all the aviation experts told me. They were laughing at it. So who made the plane? A shipyard. A shipyard? A shipyard who knew how to use carbon fiber to be extremely light, to deal with big wingspans. And afterward, the aviation industry was really ashamed because the shipyard made the first solar airplane that flew around the world. Time and again, the, the existing energy industry we'll talk about the challenges of renewables. They'll say it's not always windy, it's not always sunny. Because uh, they're used to a world where they provide us with a sort of rectangle of power. Not in the future, but today. Yeah, exactly. We have this remarkable world where, when it is windy and sunny, we have totally independent, completely carbon-free, unbelievably cheap energy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we just have to change the mindset, the paradigm that says, if we use more of it at those times, then we open the world that you've already experienced, where things that today destroy our planet do no harm at all, and they cost nothing. The biggest experience with solar impulse was to understand that I was not in the future. I was in the present with the technologies of today, allowing, allowing me to fly today on solar power. That means that if I was not in the future, but only in the present, what does it mean? It means that the rest of the world was in the past. And now, you know, aviation has launched 600 electric airplane programs since we flew around the world with solar impulse. So it really shows that you need to take the risk to open a new field and pioneering spirit, you know, innovation, 
It's not about inventing something new. It's about getting rid of the old belief that keep you prisoners of the past. So I've launched a new project now that I would like to show you on the screen, which is a hydrogen, green hydrogen powered airplane to fly non-stop around the world with zero emissions. So now it's time to make the ultimate flight and show that with liquid hydrogen, if it's made in a green way with renewables, and that's the link also between us, I hope you'll provide the renewable energies for my green hydrogen. We'll do the deal now. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, this plane should be able to do it non-stop, show that you can achieve the impossible with hydrogen and make hydrogen industry desirable. You know, this is what fails in, in our world, to make ecology, hydrogen, renewable energies, energy efficiency, much more desirable. And with the amount of hydrogen we will take to fly two people for nine days, you can put in a normal Airbus 320 to fly 150 people for several hours. Uh, so the uh, order of magnitude hang on, who's go works with you? completely. You said two people. Who's going with you? Uh, Raphael Dinelli, who is a French navigator, oh, who is shit. a composite... Um, I thought I was in there, You mate. wanted to fly I with this I, I was about to sponsor it. We're about to do amazing deal. Okay, but you have to build it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.